father of lies, you delight in your children. Yes, you do, God. Father of lies, you delight in your children. Thank you for the righteousness of Jesus that you've given to us. Father of lies, you delight in your children. Father of lies, you delight. In your children, mm. and the every good and perfect gift comes from you, and every good and perfect gift comes from you, and the every good. Perfect gift comes from you, a father of lies. Father of lies, you never change. You have not turned Father of lies, you never change. You have not turned Father of lies, you are the faithful God, Father of lies. You never change, you have no turning. Father of lies, you never change, oh, you have no turning. comes from you every good and perfect gift comes from you father of
runs from you and every good perfect gift comes from you It was my cross you bore, so I could live in the freedom you died for.
And now my life is yours And I will sing Of your goodness forevermore Exalted man in the heavens, as your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens, as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. 
as your glory fills this place. And you alone deserve our praise. Through the name of the Lord.
worthy is your name. we come to your living waters today. We hear your invitation. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Would you be the great shepherd and lead us to streams of living water today? Secret in the quiet place, in the stillness you are here. In the secret, in the quiet hour, I wait only for you, because I want to know you more. Secret in the quiet place, in the stillness you are there. In the secret, in the quiet hour, I wait only for you, because I want to know you more. I want to know you. I want to know you, I want to hear your voice, I want to know you more, I want to touch you, I want to see your face, I want to know For the highest goal that I might receive the prize. Sing onward, pushing every hindrance aside, out of my way, as I want to know. I want 
that we might see you as you are. I want to know you. Let's make this our prayer. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. Give me a soul for my eyes, God. I want to touch you. I want to see your face. I want to know you more. Let's make that our prayer once again. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know. spiritual eyes today, God, that we would behold your beauty and your glory. Lord, let the idols of American Christianity and the view of Jesus that is of mankind, Lord, let it be broken today in our hearts. Give us a true spirit of repentance that we would look at the Bible and your eternal word, that we would gaze upon you. Give us the purity of your waters, of your word, 
in the working of your spirit today, God. We say that we have nothing. We came into this world with nothing and we will leave with nothing. But Lord, we come to you today knowing that you have bread, true food, that you are true light, and that you are love. So shine the light of your face upon our hearts today, Lord. Let these songs just be a symbol and a piece of our hearts expressed in words to you, but let it be go into the fullness of worship in spirit and in truth and hearts submitted to you in obedience to your very commands today, Lord. We pray for the mighty working of your Holy Spirit. Even now, Lord, I pray for healings in this room. I pray for deliverance that demons would be cast out in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you would release hope and clarity in people's hearts and minds, Lord. Lord, be God, be lifted high. Be lifted high in this place. We lay down our fear, our doubts, our shame. <laughs> we lay it down. And we long to look into the glorious face of Jesus. If you're sick in body right now, just go ahead and ask God to touch your body. He's the healer. Um, wherever you're sick, just go ahead and I don't know, do what you got to do. Put your hand on it. Do something. Say, Lord, right here. Right here, God. Release your power, Lord, all over this room. And we say, sickness, be healed in Jesus' name. disease goes in Jesus name we agree together in the spirit we agree together in the spirit you are the God who heals you are the God who creates broken and non-existing organs <laughs> all darkness goes in Jesus name Every tormenting spirit goes in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, be lifted high in this place, Lord. You're the God who makes rivers flow in the wilderness. You are. In every wilderness in our hearts, in our lives, in our nation, in our city and county, Lord, we say, let your waters flow. We need your hope. We need your strength. We need your wisdom. We need your meekness and humility. Let us learn from you today. So, Lord, let your peace be on us today. Release great grace upon your word and in our worship, in our fellowship. We gather together in Jesus' name, Father. We love you and bless you. Yeah, we'll get to see you all.
And I want to welcome those of you joining us online as well. God bless you. I have no idea who's joining us on a random, <clears throat> any given Sunday. I know angels in heaven are joining with us. <laughs> <laughs> but I know we regularly have people from Asia and Africa and other places joining us. So we're so grateful for you. God bless you. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and continue on with our service today. Um, we have some announcements for you, and uh, after that, we're going to look at God's Word together, the Bible, and so yeah, let's turn our attention to the announcements now. Hi, welcome to Parkway. I'm David, and I'm so glad we could worship together today. Here are the announcements for this week. Every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., we have our weekly online prayer gathering. You could request an invitation to join us at the address on your screen. And once a month, usually on the last Wednesday of each month, we have our United Prayer Gathering. It's an in-person prayer gathering, and so if you're in the area, I hope that you'll be able to join us. And every Thursday evening at 7.30 p.m., we have our Simple Church Gathering. Our goal is to make disciples that make other disciples and to start churches that multiply churches. Our vision here at Parkway is to be a network of simple churches that meets during the week online and in person. And we also have a public corporate expression here on Sunday mornings. There is a video on our website that explains the simple church vision. And you could also request an invitation to join us there as well. And here are some of the events that are coming up. And lastly, for those who would like to support the ministries here at Parkway, one of the ways you can do that is through online giving at parkwayonline.org slash give. And so we're so grateful for your partnership and for your support of the ministries here. All right, so let's open up our hearts and our Bibles and receive all that God has for us in this season and commit to pursue Him with all our hearts together as a spiritual family. God bless you. Well, praise God. Well, good to see you all. How is everyone doing? Good, good. I want to talk about today uh, about the knowledge of God, about how we as human beings could know the unseen spiritual God. And, uh, but before I do, I forgot I wa wanted to highlight two um, announcements. Our men's fellowship hike and uh, coffee and barbecue is this, uh, this Saturday, right? This coming so Saturday? No? Is it the 27th? Is it next Saturday? Oh, man, I got all excited. Okay, never mind. Forget that. <laughs> it's in two weeks. Sorry about that. So, we're, guys, we're going to meet here on um, Saturday morning, the 27th, at uh, 845. We have some special coffee. And if you don't know what special coffee is, talk to it. Vaughn, back there at the computer there in the white hat, he will tell you what special coffee is. 8.45 here, and then we're going to carpool 9 o'clock. We're going to go to Pacifica, hike from the bottom of Pacifica Beach about a mile or so up the hill, and then hike up to Gorilla Barbecue and have some barbecue, and then hike on down. So they're only open for lunch that day. So, um, so guys, everyone is welcome to join us um, April 27th. The other announcement is next Sunday, hope I got that right, yes, 21st, is uh, Victor Villangara. Uh, he is going to, he's an evangelist. He, um, God sends him to Mexico and other places, but he's been going there quite off a lot this year. And so I, we've invited him back to share what God is doing there. And also just encourage us. Uh, he's an evangelist. He preaches the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And, and he sees miracles and God changing people's lives and healing and delivering people. 
here in the U.S. and in Mexico. So yeah, he was here a few months ago last year, and so I hope that you'll be here to be able to uh, receive and be challenged and to um, just hear what God is doing. So that's next Sunday. All right. <coughs> I want to talk about the title of today's sermon, the key, the key to our fulfillment, our transformation, and our impact. The key to our fulfillment, transformation, and impact. And the conclusion is going to be that knowing God is the key to our being fulfilled, to our um, being transformed and changed, and us having a lasting, deep impact, making a difference in the world. The key to all of those things is knowing who God is. It's the knowledge of God. Um, This year, our theme has been Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, that Holy Spirit would illuminate the eyes of our hearts, because when when I'm looking inside my closet and the lights are off, I can't see anything, but when there's light, okay, there's my shirt, this is the blue one, this is the green one. I could see clearly. When God shines the light, not just in our room, but in our hearts, then we could really know who He is. Anybody could write an article or talk about who God is. I think God is like this. No, you're wrong. God is like this. But God knows who he is. I can make an idol in my mind of who I think God is or who I think God should be based upon my experiences or my lack of experiences. But God is who he is. He, I am that I am. And the amazing thing is, God, the Bible says God reveals himself, in fact, wants us to know him. He is light, and he shines his light, and we get to know him. And when we know him, when the creator of the universe, the one who knows, God knows me better than myself, right? God knows me better than myself, how my life should work. I think I know what my problems in life are and who the problems in my life are, (laughs) and what the issues are. I say, God, fix it in Jesus' name. Amen. (laughs) But sometimes my view of God, my knowledge of God is a God I've made up. If my knowledge of God is one I've made up, I'm going to pray to God in a certain way, right? And then I'm going to expect God to do certain things according to my image of God. And I'm going to say, God, how come you're not changing my life? How come you're not transforming me? I'm not asking you for anything bad. I'm asking you to take away my addiction. How come you're not not answering? Or how come I don't feel deep satisfaction? And and I want to know you, God, but you're not revealing yourself. There's no fulfillment in my life. There's a longing. There's an emptiness. All the money in the world doesn't bring a sense of purpose and meaning and fulfillment. And we say, God, what's going on? Anyways, it's the true knowledge of God, true knowledge of God, not a partial knowledge of God or an incomplete knowledge of God or a make-believe knowledge of God, but it's the true, full knowledge of God that leads to my transformation, me being changed, to me being fulfilled, and me making a difference in the world. So that's our message today. (coughs) Philippians 1.8, Paul said, I consider everything else in life to be poop. <laughs> poop. Ooh, you said poop in church. <laughs> yeah, I said poop. Paul said poop. <laughs> he said, I consider it rubbish that I might know Christ and gain him. Paul says, Paul says everything else. He had education. I don't know how much money he had, but he had everything. He had status, influence. He said people do this and people did that. And Paul said, I count everything rubbish, poop that I might know Jesus. So we want to talk about what that knowledge of God is. What is that knowledge of Jesus? There's a pastor, an author named A.W. Tozer. He wrote a book called The Knowledge of the Holy. And he says this quote that has always gripped me. And he says in that book, what comes into your mind when you you think about God is the most important thing about us, right? Right? love that quote. What comes into our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. It's not how tall or short. 
not how much education you got or not. <laughs> it's not how much income, net worth you have. It's not how many people you know. Oh, I know the mayor of this city. It, it's not about those things. It's what comes into your mind when you think about God that is the most important thing about you, right? And so that the corollary of that would be that if we have the right knowledge of God, it leads to our fulfillment, impact, and influence. But if we have a wrong or partial knowledge of God, it leads to um, uh, not the things that God is looking for. So our theme verse is Ephesians 1.18 this year, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. But Ephesians 1.17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that you would know him. This is the first prayer that Paul prays in the book of Ephesians. Paul prays first that you would know God, and only God, the Holy Spirit, can reveal God to you. And he says, after you know God, light comes into your heart, spiritual eyes, and then you could see who you are. That's what Ephesians 1.17 is in a summary. Paul says, I pray that your spiritual eyes, you would know God as he truly is, and then light would come in, and then you would know the hope of his calling, who you are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us to believe. Paul prays that we would know God. Well, we can't really know ourselves, the good, the bad, and our problems and the solutions if we don't know God rightly first. And of course, when the Bible talks about knowing God, it's not just information, right? It's not just, okay, God is, God, what's your favorite color? Okay, blue, all right. <laughs> hey, I know God, I know God. Or, you know, you're, you're eternal, oh, okay. It's not just facts and information about God. That's not knowing God, right? Knowing God and in, also is not just having an experience or an encounter or, or feeling his presence or believing that he's real. That's not necessarily knowing God either. There's a verse in the Bible um, James chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, two verses. Paul, uh, James says this, you believe that there is one God, right? Which according to the Bible is a good thing. There is not many gods, there's only one, the Father, and he is in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's only one God, and that's a good thing. But he says, you do well. But he says, even the demons believe. <laughs> so he say, believe in God, and yeah, even the demons believe in God. So it's believing in God is not really knowing who he is. And, but at least the demons tremble. <laughs> but, do, but do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? We'll get to that part in a minute. <clears throat> but knowing God is not about information. Um, knowing God is after God the creator has sh shown his light and we see him, what we do in response is the knowing God part. Um, let, me, let me see if I could say it a few different ways today. The principle, the main idea today is this. The knowledge of God, um, I usually don't do this, but everyone say the knowledge of God, knowledge of God leads to how I think and feel. Yeah, sorry I butchered that. that. There's a reason I don't do this. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't talk. Just, I'll just say it. <laughs> okay. I'll try it again. I'll try it again. Sorry. The knowledge of God leads to how I think and feel leads to what I do. Okay, I'm going to have to practice that more. <laughs> There's a reason I'm not on TV, guys. <laughs> All right, so the knowledge of God how I know God and how I think of him leads to what I feel and what I think, and that leads to what I do, right? And what, like Abraham W. Tozer said, it's about the knowledge of God that is the most important because how we know him determines what we think and what we feel and determines what I do, right? Now, the Bible says repentance is a very important thing, isn't it? It's the very first thing Jesus said, repent. But in English, repent means be sad about your sin. But in the Bible, that's not what repent means. In the Bible, repent means think again, rethink. That's the Greek word. So when Jesus said repent, what is he saying? 
Is he saying, feel bad that you're doing bad things that I don't like? Ooh, you're smoking, or you're doing saying bad words, or you're doing this. Is that what God is saying when he's saying repent? What Jesus is saying is, think again about your life. Think about, again about who I am. The kingdom of God is near as the king he has drawn near. So think again. Reevaluate your life. Why do you like the things you like? Do you really like it? <laughs> Does it really bring you the pleasure and the joy and the fulfillment and the transformation and the impact that is deep a longing in, in your heart? So just think again. So we think that if we change our behavior, New Year's resolutions, books, whatever, or if we change how we think and how we feel, that things would change. But I've been there many, many years, and I realize it only lasts a few days or a few weeks or months, and then I'm right back at it. <laughs> but the Bible says, instead of trying to change what you do and what you feel, the issue is our knowledge of God. Because how you think about God and who He is will determine what you think and what you feel and will determine what you do. So, the right knowledge of God will lead to right thinking and right feeling, will lead to the actions that we desire. The wrong or partial or incorrect knowledge of God will lead to incorrect feeling and thinking and will not re result in the fulfillment and the change and the transformation and the impact that we all long for. <coughs> Let me give you a few examples of a wrong ways that we see God. Um, there's a thing called genie in a bottle. And the genie wiggles the nose and boom, magic. <laughs> or there's a, you know, a man called Santa Claus. And when I need something, once a year when I want something, I hope I've been good and I'm on his good list and he will hear me. Or maybe there's a disciplinarian. When you're growing up, maybe you're, it, you, you got a, you got a B plus, and it was always, oh, why don't you, why didn't you get an A, <laughs> right? It was, oh, you did this, but how come you didn't do this, right? And we think of God that way. Uh, there's many, many wrong ways we could view God. And we say, oh, if God is a God of love, how could he let this happen? Um, of course, he is a God of love. The Bible says he is love. But he's also absolutely and completely a God of justice, and holiness and righteousness. He's all of those things. He's not only love. You know how we know he is love? Because he is also just, and his justice requires penalty for our sin, but instead he gives us his son Jesus to die and pay for the penalty of our sin. He is all fully justice and fully love. So, uh, uh, three, uh, three quick things. Uh, our transformation. Let me give you one verse for our transformation. 2 Corinthians 3.18 it says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. What that says is we are beholding or looking at God, and as we look at Him, we're being changed into His image. That's what Christianity is. Christianity is not, oh, okay, I'm going to try to be a better person and stop doing bad things and do good things and it's beholding the knowledge of God and being transformed into His image. If we have the wrong view or a view of God that I've made up, am I being transformed into the image of God? No. So it's very important that we grow in the knowledge of God. When you get stuck in your life, what do you do? I'm searching Rabbi Google. <laughs> I'm asking people in my life. I'm doing all sorts of things, but I want to give you four suggestions. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> Go to the knowledge of God, because um, we become what we behold. You know, there's some websites these days that if you go to these websites, you could buy the clothes that celebrities have worn. This is what singer so-and-so wore last Thursday at the gala. You could buy it on my website. <laughs> and so people behold their idols, and they want to be like them. They buy what they wear. They wear what they wear. And they talk like them. They walk like them. They want to feel like them, right? That's because what we behold, and we want to become what we behold. We behold what we want to become, and we become what we behold. It's both ways. And the biblical transformation is looking onto Jesus 
and be beholding him and be being transformed into his image. So that's why the knowledge of God is important. It's not so much that, oh, I'm at a, you know, 6 out of 10, and, and God is at an 8 out of 10, so i got to try a little harder to be a little more patient. No, it's not that. It's God is completely holy. There's no way I could be like him. But I behold him, and he says, I want you to be like me completely. Be holy as I am holy. Be perfect as I am perfect. That's New Testament Christianity. And, we, and we're supposed to say, no way, God. So I fully surrender. I consider my old life as crucified instead of trying to improve it. Say, Lord, I want to be transformed into your image. That's, that's Christianity, and that's the only way without coming into our own strength. So that's the way we are transformed. If you want to change in your life, go to the knowledge of God. Go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and look at Jesus, in whom dwells the fullness of the deity in, God, in bodily form, and see how he interacted with people. And let him blow your mind and say, oh, you're like that, Jesus. I had my own mind in my view of what Jesus is like, and you're not like that. So knowledge of God is a key to our transformation. Knowledge of God is also key to our fulfillment. I'm, um, I'll, I'll use this verse to get into that thought. It's John chapter 15, verse 14. This is an enigmatic verse. I'm using harder words today. <laughs> this is a weird verse. John 15, 14 says, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Yeah, let that sink in. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Like, if you have kids, and like, they go to the playground, and the, they said, hey, you want to be my friend? Yeah, yeah, let's go play. No, do everything I command you. You'd say, hey, don't go find some other friends. <laughs> that's, that's weird. <laughs> right? That's not with humans. That's weird. But when it comes to God, this is a deep mystery. Jesus says, I want you to be my friend. As a creator, he wants us to know him. He wants us to know deep fulfillment, meaning in life, purpose, power, hope. And he says, I want you to be my friend. And I want you to obey everything, every single thing I command you. This is a key. God, the creator, who designed everything according to his way, in goodness, without sickness, without death, without anxiety or fear or any of these things. He created a perfect world in his image and created us in his image. He invites us into friendship with him. He wants us to know what he thinks. He wants us to know how he feels. But true friendship with God doesn't just mean pray a lot, come to church three times a week, and, you know, oh, I... I encountered God. Yeah, that's good. Those are all good. But Jesus says, if you want to be my friend, let me tell you the secret. If it doesn't lead to daily obedience to all I've commanded, you've misunderstood the friendship part. There's a fantasy in our mind of what friendship with God is. It's greater than we could ever imagine, but the way we know we're moving in the right direction is that if when God says something, there is joyful obedience in my heart and saying, thank you, God, for showing me the way, I'll do it. There's no way in the world I can do it, but I will. Because you say, and Jesus died for my sin, strengthen my heart, God. <coughs> so the, if with friendship with God, the goal is not to have a vision or a dream or an encounter. The goal is obedience to the God of the universe who calls us into friendship with him. And this is so key, especially um, um, in this season. Friendship with God is not just someone who talks the talk and has the feelings and the emotions, and, but it's someone who truly lives it out daily in everyday life. That's what friendship with God is. Worship. Worship is not something we come to once a week on Sunday or another day of the week. Worship is seeing the worth and the value of God and saying, yes, I'm going to do your word and do your, uh, follow your commands. So I want to encourage us to, not, to start tracking obedience. Start tracking obedience, not just encounter and experience or knowledge. 
when we look at our lives, when we look at each other, when we see other people, say, okay, not how skilled are they? How many talents do they have? Are they a five or a two or a one? Wow, how many visions and encounters have they had? Don't track those. Those are just things God gives freely. Track the fruit. It's hard to track fruit of people you don't know. But what do they say in secret? How do they treat people in their lives? Do they operate in meekness and humility and in love? Right? Those are the things that matters in God's design. And that is friendship with God. So the key to our fulfillment is the knowledge of God. The key to our impact, making a difference in the world, is um, dependent on the knowledge of God. Matthew chapter 25, verse 24 through 25. I won't stay on this long because this was last week's sermon. But let me just read these two verses. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. Right? Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. So the parable is the master went on a long journey he got his servants and gave them different amounts of talents. One he gave five, one he gave two, one he gave one. And the, one, the two others went immediately and invested the money and doubled their investment. But the third servant, he received one talent, but he was afraid of the master, and he went and hid the talent, didn't take risks, didn't use the talents. The message last week was that it's the same master He gave them different amounts, but he gave them his property. The two received the talents and said, let me add it. Let me go use this. And they doubled it. But the third man, same master, same words, same talents, he said, ah, I'm smart. I know you're a tough man. I know you're very stingy. You're going to expect people to do something with your money. I so he said, I'm afraid. The other two responded in faith and confidence. This guy, because of the way he viewed God, he responded in fear. And because of fear, he hid his talent. Because his heart was not right with God. And when he looked at the same master, he saw something else. The other two saw a master who said, I want you to partner with me. There's no way you could have you know, millions of dollars. But here, you do it. Run with it. All right, awesome. I'm going to work this. Every, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> you know, it's like the flower girl, just like, whoa. <laughs> the other one is like, oh, no, this is a master's money. He is such a hard man. I'm scared. <clears throat> if we want to make an impact in the world, the knowledge of God impacts how and when and whether or not or where we use what God has given to us. So the knowledge of God is very important. You know, our knowledge of God is impacted, affected by our experiences in life, good or bad, or lack of experiences. You know, if, if, if I find that I'm angry at God, then I'd see, how was my relationships in my life? My parents, my father, my authority figures in my life, and you know, usually we, we shape the way we view God from our experiences, but God wants to shine his light and show us who he really is. Good. In conclusion today, a few thoughts. So the summary today is the true knowledge of God leads to our transformation, our life changing, leads to our fulfillment, our friendship with God, and our impact making a difference in the world. This is Paul's prayer. And so I pray that we would Ask God.
or knowledge of him because we don't know him rightly as the reason we don't live rightly. And he wants us to experience fulfillment and transformation and joy. I want to end with Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. This was the verse that was on my heart this morning. <clears throat> Jesus says, um, well, he, before this verse, he says, unless I, the, how he reveals a father. And then he says in verse 28, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden. You guys are working hard and you're burdened. It just says, come to me. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke, my burden upon you. It's, it's the thing that the oxen pull to till the ground so that seed can be planted and things can grow. It's like, take my yoke upon you, not your heavy yoke, not your yoke that brings burdens that I don't mean for you to carry. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. What's the translation here? For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <clears throat> This is an invitation for us from the Lord Jesus. He says, come to me. He wants us to know him. How does the God of the universe relate to the issues of our life? Is, is God anxious and sad and worried on the throne? No. So when I pray to the God on the throne, am I moving in his meekness and humility? Or am I moving in my flesh in worry and anxiety? Jesus says, come to me. You're working hard. You're working hard. You're very burdened. He says, come to me. Let me show you who I am, what I'm like. Then you'll find rest. Yeah, there's some work, but it's easy. Just come, look. So that's Jesus' invitation to us. thing in our Christian lives, we work really hard, maybe as a Christian, even harder, to try to be a good person, to try to be a good dad, a good mom, a good neighbor, a good follower of Jesus, and there's pressures on us. We want to make an impact in the world. We want to feel fulfillment, and, and in our Lack of understanding God, we do things that cause fear and anxiety and burdens rather than joy and working for Jesus. God is not, God disciplines, but he's not out to get us. How do, I, how do I go there? Um, how about this? How about this? <clears throat> There's a teaching that I need to be careful what I say, right? And we rightly should, James. I don't want to say wrong things, and I don't want to declare wrong things. But sometimes, instead of moving in the meekness and the humility of Jesus, we get into mind games, and it brings anxiety and pressure and burdens rather than Partnering with Jesus. That's one example. Um, so what does that look like in our prayer? After I prayed, am I, am I partnering with Jesus? Or am I having to spin all these plates and keep them afloat? All right? <laughs> Get the right scriptures and quote them and not say this. Oh, I, I know I'm thinking this, but I'm not going to say it. And uh, all these games... Nah, it's, just, it's only like, like, like 10% helpful. But let's really come to Jesus. So the message today, the principle is the knowledge of God leads to how I think and how I feel leads to what I do. And so let's press in, ask God for light so that we would know him and let him take away our burdens. 
so that we would not just be trying to do things for him and of an image of who we think God is. Let's really press in to know him. And out of that will flow fulfillment and joy and confidence and transformation. Out of that flows all of those things. Amen. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord. I ask you for pure waters, God. We drink water and we expect it to be clear and without pathogens and deadly bacteria and contaminants and waste and radioactive and just whatnot, heavy metals. Lord, we ask for the blood of Jesus to cover over our sin that out of our brokenness, we've created an image of you that is not you. And we work really hard for that idol. We pray really hard. We give a lot and we sacrifice for that idol. And we become weary and burdened and heavy laden. But God, I thank you that you care about us too much to leave us there. And our desire is not to know a man-made religion or American Christianity in the 20th century. We want to know the everlasting God who transcends time and culture. The God who loved us and sent his one and only son to be a sacrifice, an atonement for our sin. So Lord, we ask you that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that we would know you, God. Lord, we admit that there is a famine of the knowledge of God in our lives and in our generation. We long to know you, Lord. Would you have mercy upon us? Give us ointment for our eyes that we could see, that we would not see blurly and just, oh, there you are, but just to be able to see clearly and to know your heart and that our hearts would know your goodness, your goodness, your goodness towards us, Lord. I ask for help by your Holy Spirit today. Or if there's anyone here who is, you are calling and saying, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. <clears throat> come and learn from me. Or if there's anyone that you're saying that to today, I just pray for your grace to respond, Lord. So if that's you, and say, Lord, that's me, I'm weary and burdened today. I need your rest. I want to learn from you. Respond to the Lord and say, God, I want to learn from you. Show me who you are, your meekness, your gentleness. I've run myself ragged trying to make this Christianity thing work. Jesus, I want to learn your truth instead. And also, I want to ask if there's anyone here and and if, you've, if you're here and you're in a place in your life where God is drawing you and you're thinking, hmm, who is this Jesus and what does he want from me? And the Bible says that we live in a world of brokenness and it leads us into trying to numb the pain and to find fulfillment and meaning in the world and none of those things work. But Jesus died on the cross for your sin and my sin. He died to pay the penalty of it. And he calls us to repent and to come to him. And you know, if that's you and the love of God is drawing you, say, yes, I need to to say yes to God's love today. So if that's you, just respond to him and say, that's me. Is that anyone here today? Okay, good. Anyone else? Anyone So if that's you, say, Lord, forgive me for my sin. 
I believe you, Jesus, that you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross for my sin. I want to rethink my life in light of who you are and what you have done for me. Thank you for forgiving me of my sin by what you did on the cross. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. I want to follow you. I want to know your love and your peace. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for making me your daughter or your son. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, all of us here, we want to know you. Say, God, we really want to know you. Give us the joy of knowing you, not just believing you, not just serving you, but to know friendship with you. A deep, abiding, joy-filled, life-giving friendship with you. And that leads to joyful, voluntary love, loving you back in obedience. Show us what that means. Sign me up for that, God. I want to know friendship with you. Help me. Help me to live it out daily in joyful obedience. Let there be fruit in my life of knowing you. We love you. Bless you, God. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, we believe Jesus heals and delivers and, and brings breakthrough in people's lives. And if you're here today and you need healing in your body or um, you, need God, you, need, you need a miracle in your life, today is your day. We're here. We're going to believe God together. Gonna, we want to pray for you. So if, if that's you, uh, just let, let us know, let me know, and we'll get some people to pray with and for you. Good, good. All right, well, good. It's been a great day. God bless you. Have a great week. And uh, yeah, let's give God praise and love one another as you go. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, God. We give you praise today. Amen. Amen.